Yeah. Uh, okay, getting back in the disco noir for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Got distracted by other things and, you know, things like, you know, a job. <laughs> I stayed home like Friday at about midnight. Has to go back out again and had to go back to work again on Sunday. But I've had some time off recently to get other things and other projects done. Like I just ripped the entire Pony Pony Dash series off the DVDs. Of the AD Veal DVDs, anyway. From... I've gone through this... game last night. And there's like a really bad buzzing noise the entire time coming from April's audio. Yeah, I guess it came from the, uh... Uh, webcam I was using. I didn't realize that... Uh... Yeah, I got uh, my mic audio, and I'll just look up there at OBS. Was coming for, and was picking it up the entire time, and was recording it, even though it was not set to record. Uh, a little issue going on now is that, like, doing a task play, and it's like every time a Luton talks, there's like a background whisper to April. It comes through April's audio for whatever reason, so it's, it's not bad. It's like a slight tinny. Well, the, some of you might know that April doesn't sound so much like she has a cold. I wouldn't reprocess the restart. Uh, the goddess restart from Kasha's hero. And it sounds a lot a bit better now. Not perfect. Don't want it to be perfect. I just call it say yeah an homage to the goss restart and it's kind of like the voice I've always pictured for April. Kind of like, I don't know, would it be considered Californian? Go I sit here, I go, why? Uh, this doesn't come up on screen. Uh, let's see, type in the, uh, oh. It's just found if an I, no E. Let's see. Uh, Oklahoma. Wow. Oh, in Tennessee? Uh, that's interesting. I thought she was more for- I thought she'd be from California or something. Anyway. But. Anyway. It kind of was rings in my head as April's voice. Okay, let's kind of get to work. You have been recording now for about three minutes and it's just people blizzarding to me. Well, so I'm back into the game. Uh, okay, so we kind of, when it started up the game, we missed the rat running around, and I don't think the rats run back and forth. Oh, great. Then I gotta pause. Gotta go poop. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> um, I still I haven't even started playing the game yet. I watched the review, and it took a quick look at Act Reaser 2. Yeah, that, then... Sucked. <laughs> it really effing sucked. Uh, and I grieved the Rezu, took out all the good stuff. Like the city builder. Ugh, that was the fun part of the game. Um, yeah, that was like, one how much of trying to remember how much that game cost in a day. I think my mom bought it brand new. Probably about $60. Yeah. People complain about that Zelda game costing 70 Hey, I paid $70 for Mega Man X. Okay, let's get this game crack. The rat had disappeared in a small crack in the wall. The question was, where had he gone? As I worked my fingers around the crack, it became clear that the crack was the side of a loose slab. <laughs> Red and Ducker like a fox. I won't come out in the audio anyway. I have a dirty mind.
The other side of the wall was another cell, but nothing like the holding cell. This was full of sketches and models, tools and materials. It looked more like a workshop, and there was someone working in it. Uh, would you like a cup of tea? Uh, no. We'll take a cup of coke. Are you sure? Or are they not drinking tea outside anymore? Outside? <laughs> the city. I take it you're from the city. How is it? The same as ever, I suppose. You're <laughs> Leonard <laughs> de Quirm. <laughs> yes, I am. I'd found Leonard de Quirm. The man was almost a legend. There was no disputing that Leonard was a technological genius. But this meant he was as dangerous to the precarious stability of Ankh Morpork as a compulsive smoker in a firework factory. Rumor had it that the patrician had locked him in a nice airy cell for everyone's safety, because Leonard was the kind of guy who'd light any fuse for the innocent pleasure of seeing what kind of bang he could make. The only other thing I could recall was that although the guy was hot stuff at the nuts and bolts, he was definitely at the bottom of the class when it came to thinking up names. The patrician keeps you imprisoned here, hmm? Sorry? You're working for the patrician? Uh, not really. He calls from time to time and has a look at some of my sketches. Nice man. He keeps me abreast of events on the outside. What's that you're working on? Ah. Uh, this is my flapping wing flying device. I built a small prototype out of gutta percha strips, twisted tightly together, and it worked. Although, not very well. Now I'm building a full-scale model. Does it fly? Uh, not yet. But once I've solved the problem of the weight of the holding it together frame and the mechanical faults with the spinning blades radiating from the central hub, it should do. I was having trouble getting enough force to twist the blades together. But the troll the other week sorted that out for me. Troll? Yes. He was staying in your room before you. He made this window for me so I could watch the bird. Always good for inspiration are the birds. Uh, not that I don't have enough inspiration as it is. Damn things. Just once I'd like to wake up without finding my sheets covered in sketches of novel designs for apple peelers. Did you give the troll some metal strips by any chance? Yes. He made them into a metal hook with prongs, I believe. Not one of my designs. His name was Malachite. Was it? It's possible. I never was good with names. Okay, a little background explanation. I discovered that... Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's some of the... Uh, some of such biscuit I had earlier. Oh. Uh, yummy going back down. Um... That for some reason, whenever people are talking, their voice is coming through my mic. And I can have to mute the mic when everybody's talking. The mic just wind up muting April entirely and just forgetting about, you know, doing any type of talking at all. I got no other external sound source. Anyway, so there's a little bit of uh, background information here. You know, as we've seen in previous episodes, Malachi, he is not smart, like he would not be clever enough to be able to bend the metal strips and weld them together on a rope. However, um, a couple of times in the books, we have same instances where trolls bang super intelligence. And that's usually because they are in a cold environment. And well, I don't think this area is very, very warm through here. It's probably pretty chill. Especially the other, other room will be pretty cold. So Malachi would gain a few IQ points and be able to fashion a grappling hook. Bye. I guess Malachi, he wouldn't be smart enough to punch a hole in the wall and use the grappling hook to get down. I don't think it's a question that's actually answered. Useful though they are, an exit is just an exit. Let me tell you about my existential blues.
The gaping hole had been created by Malachite to escape from the palace. Leonard liked to think of it as a window. At that moment, I thought I heard the sound of someone at the door to my cell. My heart leapt to my throat and narrowly missed my tonsils. I had to get back to my cell and fast. Hello, Luton. Nobby, what are you doing here? I've come to let you go. Does Vimes know you're here? Yeah, he sent me. What happened? There's a witness to Malachite's murder. He saw the whole thing, although not very well. He couldn't identify the killer, but from the description we got from him, we can rule out you. So, I'm off the hook? More or less. Vimes must be livid. I've seen him happier, but he's still convinced you're involved in this somehow. I dare say he has a point, actually. But I'm not a cold-blooded killer, whatever he may think. Who was the witness? A gargoyle up on the roof of the clerk's office on Salis Street. What did he see? I'm not supposed to discuss that with you. Come on, let's get you out of here. You won't get any arguments from me. Right, here's your stuff. Where's the crowbar? We're, um... Yeah. We're keeping that as evidence. Yeah. Right. I'll see you around, Nobby. Thanks for coming to get me out. I appreciate it. That's what friends are for, isn't it? Friends are for getting you out of a holding cell? Could be. I ain't got that many. You won't get any argument from me. See you later. I had this feeling that I was caught in the middle of something big. But I still hadn't a clue what it was. All I could do was keep searching and hope that sooner or later I'd stumble upon the truth. Well, maybe not stumble, just very carefully put my foot on it and hope the other end didn't come up and hit me in the teeth. Well, that was a weird thing to happen, the, uh, thing down there, the, um, uh, death bar popped up for React OS. Supposed to be invisible? I can't get to it, unfortunately, while the game's playing. Uh, let's risk of alt enter, see what happens. Uh, now it's windowed. Put it back up there. Okay, made that disappear. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Hey, where's the crowbar? There he where's Where's my crowbar? Yeah, my crowbar that has property of the petition's palace written on it. I, you know, I'm just holding it for the petition. Petition. <laughs> uh, let's see. I gotta go to the rooftops. They'd put a chalk outline where Malachite had fallen. It really drove home how big that trawl was. Okay, earlier I was wondering, uh, I didn't say it out loud in this video, but I said it out loud previously. How the hell did Malachite get through that small hole? Well, maybe he's a lot thinner than I thought according to that chalk outline. The gargoyle's name was Clark's Gable and he had witnessed what had happened on the roof with me and Malachite. It was probably the first exciting thing to happen to him in decades. Are you the gargoyle that witnessed the Troll's murder? Clark's Gable? That's right! I don't suppose you could talk a little more clearly. Thing is, I have a gutter in my mouth. <laughs> have you ever tried to speak <laughs> with a gutter? In your mouth. Have I ever tried to hick with a what? A gutter. A gutter in your mouth. Oh, with a gutter in my mouth. Yes. Sorry, I guess I haven't given much thought to the orally challenged. That's okay. We're none of us perfect. I heard you saw the murder that took place here the other night. Sure did. Mind if I ask you some questions about it? Be my guest! Never speak of a gutter in your mouth? Well... 
April is definitely not into things like the butt luge. You know, kind of you do, you try pouring out, you try pouring a beer down at Bonnie's crack to then get, get all sort of sorted by the fur. So you're a gargoyle then? What kind of a conversation opening do you call that, eh? Don't you get bored being stuck in the same place for so long? You get used to it. Mating is a bit of a pain. You must be incredibly patient. Oh, I always have plenty of things to think about. Such as? Well, like, uh, uh, is it raining? Or doesn't that cloud look like a really big cloud? Oh, the fun never stops when you're up on the rooftops. You said it. Uh, Goliath, this guy ain't. How do gargoyles mate? Very slowly. You can move, though. Of course. How do you think I got here in the first place, hmm? Then why don't you? Look. I don't criticize you for running about like your brain would stop if your body stopped moving. So don't criticize me for my lifestyle, eh? Sorry, I didn't mean to cause any offense. That's okay. We're none of us perfect. Yeah, a joke I've always wanted to do about mating rituals is, um, a kid friend uh people and bonnie show them this video about foxes getting stuck together while mating then then looks at april and bonnie can you tell me what you saw the other night when the troll was killed eh? has anything else interesting happened recently well i got a pigeon yesterday that's a rarity. Mostly they steer clear of the rooftops that are colonized by gargoyles. Putting that to one side, what did you see the other night? Well, I can only tell you what I told the watch. I saw you and the big troll come up the ladder only once you were on the roof. It was hard to make out what was going on because of the shadows. But I saw the troll get savaged, savaged repeatedly by some kind of creature. Oh, yeah! Some kind of beast. A beast? Yeah, that's the best description I can give you. It's uh, big mustache and a beret. The same. What for? For getting me out of jail. No problem. Glad I could help. If you could toss the odd pigeon up here next time they're passing, I'd be grateful. Yeah. Is there anything more you can tell me about this bestial attacker? Nah, nothing strings to mind. As a long shot, I asked if Clark's gable had seen horsed up on the roof. Not surprisingly, he hadn't. Yeah, I guess they, uh... They paid a lot of money for loot and, and decided to give, throw him some more lines. Just to justify the budget. You can see the Maudlin Bridge from here, can't you? Sure. I don't suppose you saw a carriage drive off the bridge the other night? Yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. What happened? Let me see. Um, I remember the carriage coming flying along the bridge. The driver was a dwarf, I think, and he went into convulsions just before the carriage went out of control. The next thing I know, there's someone coming out at the back of the carriage. What do they look like? My eyesight's not that good. Yeah. All I know is that as 
the driver went limp, the other person cut the reins. Mm. The horse ran off, the carriage careened into the river, and this other person leapt clear. That's all you saw? That's about it, eh? Well, I did some adjustments to the audio, see if this helps out. Can you think of any reason that Mundy might have been hung upside down before he was killed? Sorry, I can't help you with that. Well, that, that, that didn't help. For some reason, the voices are bleeding over, but not the music. I don't think there's anything else here I need to look at. Um... According to the walkthrough I have here, it says go to the Patricians' Palace, but like, I actually gotta talk to. Uh. It's a little bit backwards. Now, why would I. Uh, uh, this one's a little bit. It's like more for a speed run. I know, I don't do that part till later. So going to the floor? Still gotta go there. This is the ghost here. Okay. A good looking crowbar. I figured the golem wouldn't not that I'm Alright, important plot point. Come on, Luton. Oh, can't access the uh I guess I never really noticed that the Café Ankh had a wine cellar before. Perhaps if they'd run out of drinks at the bar, I'd have been more inclined to investigate. I knew full well that I wouldn't be able to get down there without permission and the right key. Taking a break, Samael? Oh yes. It's not easy working the piano all night. Well, I'm sure you deserve it. Thank you, Mr. Luton. You don't have to call me Mr. Samael. We're old friends. Sure thing, Mr. Luton. Old friends. I reckon I've earned a right to call you Mr. As long as that's what you want. I'm about 22 minutes in of this. How's business, Samael? It's pretty good, Mr. Luton. How are things with you? Not so good. I think I'm so deep in trouble that I haven't even realized it yet. You haven't had much luck, have you, Mr. Luden? Not since the Hotel Pseudopolis. That was when... Oh, I see. That's okay, Samael. I don't mind talking to you about it. You're like family. Oh, maybe I'm not supposed to go here just yet. Us. What can you tell me about any interesting cargo that's come into Ankh-Morpork recently? Sorry, Mr. Luton, I don't know anything about that. Uh, guess this would be for later. But, 
I guess I was on. Ah, oh, bitch, I have to go here, but... Guess I go to... Yeah, I don't want to talk to those guys. They don't do anything important. Hey, yo, walk. We over there. Walk, the walk, palace walk, walls walk. were useful for keeping intruders out and keeping the roof in place. Looking closely, I could see the other side of the hole in the wall that I'd seen from inside Leonard's cell. Is that it right here, or where is that it over here? Looks like there's a lot further rock. Noticed a crowbar. It always looked much easier in the clickies. Is he going for that window? Let me tell you right now, climbing a rope isn't that easy. He's gonna have some really good upper body strength. Uh, uh, Hello again, Leonard. Hmm. Yes. Hello. What are you doing? I'm deeply immersed in a mechanical problem. Can I help? It's not likely. I kept waiting for him to say something else, but he was lost in his work. Okay, I won't have the hiding place closed just yet. I'm missing so I gotta talk to Elsa and two poggers. I just gotta remember how I have to get to them. Yes. Oh, I think I have to talk to, um... Uh, we're there, over here. I see Sir has returned. Sir has? Who would Sir like to see? I'd like to see Carlotta. Is she home? She may be, sir. I will go and announce your presence, and she will tell me if she is. I needed to talk to you. I'm always happy to fulfill your needs, Luton. Hello, <laughs> ma'am. Look at her. Oh. Man, I thought I stacked April up a little bit much. The other way is gets me every single time. You must have known something about the Milka's cargo. Yes, I had a crate amongst the cargo. It wasn't carrying anything important. It was just for Mondi to hide the sword in if it became necessary. But the sword wasn't in the crate. No, the last I saw of the crate, Reagan had it. I don't know where it is now. Do you have anything that might help me find it? I have a shipping order. You can have it if it's useful to you. It could be. Any lead is a good one at the moment. Okay, what are they hiding there? Um, where did she pull that out of? I saw her reach in front of her. Uh, I'll see you around, Carlotta. I hope so. The watchman had a look of mad dedication about him. It was the kind of look that could only be achieved by someone whose job was so mind-numbingly tedious that their only pleasure came from being blisteringly unhelpful to everyone who came along. I'm a gate guard at an army post. I've come to collect some cargo. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, I'm gonna swallow that, aren't I? 
I mean, you come up asking questions about cargo, and I won't tell you about the cargo. Then, miraculously, you're here to collect some cargo. You must think I was born yesterday. Well, I can always take this shipping order to your boss and say that you wouldn't let me collect my cargo. Uh, okay. Well, let's not be too hasty, eh? I mean, I have to be skeptical, right? I'm a watchman. Where would we be if people like me weren't just a little bit cynical? All right, all right. You win. I eventually persuaded the watchman to show like me there the was a little bit of a delivery. strange editing Anuka in the audio. Some wine barrels that were shipped to the Café Ankh and some crates under the name Varberg. According to the watchman, they were collected by the Guild of Archaeologists, Antiquarians, and Tomb Evacuators. I guess somewhere was the von Uberwald crate that went with the shipping order. But the watchman didn't know about it, and there was no sign of it in the warehouse. <laughs> Boy, that watchman looked like he has some really buggy eyes and saucers for ears. Okay, so that opened up that. I'm gonna have to go back there again. Uh, I'll go here at the. You have to do some talking Ankh here. Oh. Pork was home to around 300 guilds most of which festered in the space between Unseen University and the Patrician's Palace like fungus. From the Assassin's Guild to the Beggar's Guild, everyone a proud group of individuals basking in their mutual arrogance. I hated them for their smugness. I hated their petty bickering. But most of all, I hated that I wasn't part of one. Well... For me, I go with the uh, great 20th century theologian who said, I don't want to be a part of any group that would have me as a member. Alright, time to stop recording on this session.